Ah, job statisticians. The self-anointed experts of workplace wisdom. According to their gospel, the work environment, your co-workers, and individual recognition are the holy trinity of job satisfaction. But hold on to your hats, folks, because this story contributes to none of that. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Creating a positive and supportive culture within a school is not just a goal. It's a full-time commitment. Throughout my career, I always believed in the importance of making sure that every member of the school community, from support staff to teachers, felt valued and appreciated. That's why we made it a tradition to kick off each school year with team building exercises, often heading to the local bowling alley to foster camaraderie and teamwork. We didn't stop there. We made sure to mark special occasions like birthdays, retirements, and new arrivals with a heartfelt gesture. Well, cake usually or donuts. I think that really showed our appreciation. Because, let's face it, when students are running amok like they just discovered sugar for the first time, and their parents are giving them a run for their money in the madness department, those tiny gestures of appreciation, they're worth their weight in gold. Now for today's story. Mr. Green and I were like the dynamic duo of the admin team. As assistant principals on a sprawling high school campus, our days were a whirlwind of student discipline. We were basically the high school version of traffic cops. But while our job descriptions were all business, Mr. Green was like a walking contradiction. One part chill and two parts very high strung. Our friendship blossomed instantly, partly because he was the perfect foil for my endless stream of juvenile pranks and nonsense. Mr. Green's 50th birthday loomed on the horizon. I took it upon myself to ensure that the entire campus was aware. The night before the big day, I enlisted the help of my trusty accomplice, also known as my wife, to unleash a birthday extravaganza of epic proportions. We unrolled enough banner paper to stretch to the moon and back and blazoned with the proclamation, Mr. Green is 50, in letters so large they could be seen from outer space. We plastered the walls with signs announcing the milestone event, ensuring that no corner of the school was left untouched. And let's not forget the piece de resistance, enough black balloons to turn Mr. Green's office into a cave of despair. But wait, there's more. Alongside the customary cake, we added a touch of geriatric humor with a box of Depends, some Geritol, and a few mystery pills promising to restore his long-lost virility. When Mr. Green's big day finally arrived, he was bombarded with well wishes, high fives, and a few playful jabs about joining the Over the Hill Club. As luck would have it that day, I found myself lingering in the front office just as the students were gearing up for their daily dose of announcements, the pledge, and the moment of silence. Little did I know, Faith had a mischievous twist in store for me, lurking just around the corner. Since I was standing around, the students assumed I had something to say. I found myself thrust into the spotlight with no script in one hand and a mic in the other. But hey, who needs a script when you're a master of improv, right? With confidence bordering on reckless abandon, I decided to seize the moment and deliver a clever quip. After all, extemporaneous wit was my middle name. In my mind, I toyed with the idea of delivering a traditional birthday greeting to Mr. Green, but in a last-minute stroke of genius, I decided to take it up a notch. Instead of the usual, happy birthday... Why not announce the passing of Mr. Green's youth? I mean, hitting the big 5-0 was practically the end of innocence, right? Where is that little voice in your head when you need it? Keep it simple, stupid. Just keep it simple. Well, the little voice seemed to have taken an impromptu vacation, leaving me stranded at the mercy of my own misguided creativity. During the solemn moment of silence, my mind raced with a single thought. This is it. This is the moment to deliver the line that will go down in school history. With each passing second, the weight of the impending announcement grew heavier. I need to announce the passing of Mr. Green's youth. Because he's 50. Echoed in my mind like a mantra. I need to announce the passing of Mr. Green's youth. It was supposed to be a comedic revelation tinged with just a hint of morbid truth. With my hilarious one-liner perfected, all that stood between me and comedic glory was the delivery. Laughter and merriment were poised to ensue, cementing my status as a comedic legend. As the students eagerly passed the microphone to me, I assumed a solemn tone and began, This is a sad day. I need to announce the passing of Mr. Green. <coughs> oh no. 
But before I could finish the sentence, something inexplicably lodged in my throat. I turned away for a brief moment to cough, then returned to the mic, attempting to salvage the moment with an explanation. However, the damage was already done. In those brief moments of silence, noisy confusion rippled through the school like a shockwave. Teachers frantically called the front office and were weeping in despair. My attempted humor backfired spectacularly. There was a rumor of a lynch mob. While Mr. Green chuckled at the unexpected turn of events, our boss was less entertained, and I spent the rest of the day facing the wrath of some seriously unamused staff members. Looking back, it's a reminder that even the best intentions can sometimes lead to unexpected outcomes. But amidst the chaos and confusion, there's always room for laughter and camaraderie. Mr. Green and I shared a laugh afterwards, reflecting on the aftermath. We joke that, according to student opinion, the reaction by Blender was pretty evenly split between those mourning Mr. Green's supposed demise and those secretly celebrating their newfound freedom from his disciplinary reign. You can't make this stuff up.